Hey guys, I've been looking into a event-driven serverless platform for Internet of Things applications. Check this out. Here they have data sources, then this area where the data gets dropped here, the uh, Lambda function that can pull, Redshift, Lambda. They have event bridge for scheduling. They can send out emails and notifications. They can transfer data with SFTP and CloudFront and all the rights to the customers. As you might know, I'm coming from the IoT field, right? I've worked for years with IoT data and on my IoT platform. So I really like this one and I think this is very valuable and you can learn a lot from this. So have fun. Hi, I'm Nicole from AWS. Hi, I'm Brandon O'Daniel from Xylem, and this is my architecture. Welcome, Brandon. So I am a huge gardener that enjoys using IoT devices to collect metrics about my actual garden's performance. I'm really curious about this serverless event-driven IoT collection solution that you've built. So how did we get here? Interesting, yes, right? A solution, a solution for gardening and IoT devices. Wow. <laughs> they use this in a large scale operations and uh, like farming is a lot with soil quality. So um, let's see what they do here. Was designed for Xylem, which is a worldwide water company, specifically for the census brand of Xylem, which does a lot of smart metering and electric water and gas okay, water. distribution networks. So the solution we designed is called the Xylem Data Lake. Not data formerly lake. known as the Census Utility Data Lake. And specifically, in this solution, we have data stores that send files from various IT systems up into our Amazon S3 data storage, where there are S3 events that trigger land. That, that sounds more like we, they were saying IoT, so I was thinking that here are actually IoT devices, right? Um, but it seems like these are these are just um, other systems and not IoT devices. I'm a bit sad about that. Sam does, which loads data in, into Amazon Redshift clusters for mm -hmm. us. Additionally, we have situations where some of our data producing applications goes oh, through okay. and publishes REST APIs, which are called via AWS Lambdas to pull data and then insert into Amazon Redshift pull data so it's the other okay the lambda here is pulling data it's not it's not sending data in because usually what you what would you think that there is an api here in front and that that api actually um, gets used by the system right by the iot device and that lambda then sends data through so it's a i personally i don't like that very much uh, I, I usually like the, the other way around, but uh, let's see. And when I say Amazon Redshift here, it's actually about 11 different Amazon Redshift clusters spread off across three different geographies okay. worldwide. Okay, so you're using a combination of push and pull to mm -hmm. collect that data into Redshift. Mm -hmm. um, well, can you tell us about your considerations? Why Redshift in this solution? The reason why we picked Redshift was because we needed a columnar data store that was very performant. And also too, we needed the ability through to data governance uh, requirements from our customers to physically separate our customer's data from each other customer. Mm. Okay. So that led us away from solutions such as using Athena with um, you know, Parquet storage on S3, which we use in other places in, in our internal data lakes. But in terms of customer facing, we needed Redshift. Also too, we wanted to- So that means they, most likely they create different clusters for the customers. My that's my guess because how do you do the separation? You need to do different clusters for them or use different clusters, not just different databases within, because then, although logically it might be differentiated or it might be separate, it will not be separate on a way of um, storage. That would be the same thing as within Athena. You would drop the data into the data lake, but Logically, it, or from an access point, it would still be within Athena. Take advantage of the that reserved instance pricing of Redshift, which saved us a significant amount of money, which we could pass along to our customers. Now, yeah, okay. I'm curious then. Okay, so they are also then passing on the costs of the clusters for each customer. 
I do see that we're using our event bridge service here. So how are you actually levering this, leveraging this and your solution for moving data around? Yeah, it was wonderful. So about the time we were designing a batch process or a batch scheduler, Amazon EventBridge Scheduler was released. And we said, this is great. Why don't we go through and try to use this? Because we love serverless on our team. Because Makes sense. EventBridge I also used in, uh, in one of my courses where we build an ETL pipeline, extract data from a, uh, an API. It's exactly what I, what I also did. It's and serverless good decreases the total cost of labor and amount of maintenance that we need to do mm -hmm. as Absolutely. a development team. We use Amazon EventBridge Scheduler to write batch jobs to pull data from Amazon Redshift instances. And then those batch jobs can either send reports, they can send data files out through Amazon Simple Email Service or SES. Mm -hmm. We can go through and publish data stores over to our AWS Transfer SFTP instance within our but he didn't say how they do this, right? So EventBridge is, is for scheduling, so they most likely they have a, a Lambda function or Lambda functions here that then take the data and then basically send this out, right? That's my guess here from a, from a process standpoint. Our company. And there's also places where uh, customers can pull data. So for instance, we have a Angular, Angular web application. Okay. That's hosted on CloudFront where it makes calls over to Lambda in order to pull data up into Redshift so customers can go through and generate their own reports. Okay. okay. They can generate their reports and not extract a lot of data because extracting a lot of data through that Lambda mm, might not be what you want. Okay, this, this makes sense. You host your web app. The web app in the background uses Lambda, could also use an API, could make it so that this uses actually an API here in between, right? So that you can actually make this modular and then have different web apps accessing this API and getting data from Redshift. I think that would be a good, a good solution. In order to pull data up into Redshift so customers can go through and generate their own reports. Okay, so I'm hearing a shift towards making sure that you have managed or serverless services so mm -hmm. you don't have to do the undifferentiated lifting of okay. uh, managing that piece. Mm -hmm. And I'm also hearing that you have another way to actually allow your consumers to consume mm -hmm. this data. Mm -hmm. How do you apply security to this solution? So our customers, what they do is they come in through Amazon CloudFront, uh, through our web, Angular web application, and from there, they are authenticated via a Keycloak instance. All of our Angular web is put through a web application firewall, and we use API Gateway secured through web application firewall in order to be a wrapper around the lambdas. Yeah, that's what I meant, right? Here they have a wrapper around the lambda function, basically here in front, so that the this web app can only use the, with the, yeah, with security here, this, this lambda. Secured through web application firewall in order to be a wrapper around the lambdas. We also use, uh, such things as like SSH key sharing and um, uh, CyberArk and that sort of thing in order to provide customers uh, secure access over into like the SFTP side of mm. things. Okay, very good. Well, SFTP, thank you so much for sharing old your school. architecture with us. Nice, nice. I think generally it's an interesting uh, pipeline. I was hoping that they have more of a individual devices actually basically push data into it. This here is more you have here data stores, you have systems, external systems that write data into S3 and that will then get imported into Redshift. But it's not like you host an API here on the left and that actually then that IoT device is putting data into the platform which is more of, I would say, the traditional IoT um, use case. But yeah, with a, I like this with the web app here, that they have the web app, SFTP file transfer, yes. I'm, I'm guessing for some, for some exports, that they prepare exports for them and then write data so that they can download it here or uh, SAS so that they can notify people of a new report is ready or something.
Right. Overall, I think a cool use case. Interesting. What do you think, guys? Post it in the chat. Um, I think it's, it's a good use case.